بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Dear colleagues, in this talk we will handle the uh, one of the important issues in the musculoskeletal imaging which is uh, the imaging of the shoulder joint uh, imaging of the shoulder will be handled in three talks starting in the first one by the normal anatomy and techniques then we will handle the imaging of the rotator cuff and the Benjamin syndrome and in the last uh, section we will handle the instability and the slab injuries then uh, first of all in, in order to examine the shoulder you should have uh, the surface coil and then the suitable surface coil is that which can be placed very close to the uh, joint of interest and it uh, also will not uh, move with respiration there are uh, so many appearances of the shoulder coil and this uh, these are two of, uh, of the commonly used uh, uh, surface coil for examination of the shoulder. The major indications also are similar to any of the major joints including pain, trauma, swelling, suspected inflammation and uh, or tumors. And you remember the uh, uh, closed MRI and the open MRI the extremity MRI which is not suitable for examination of the shoulder it is uh, useful in evaluation of the knee and the ankle and also the elbow and the rest joints and uh, the protocol for shoulder examination uh, will include these uh, pulse sequences axial uh, T1 and the gradient coronal uh, oblique and this coronal is usually obtained in the T1 and T2 weighted images sometimes you may add a proton density or even a stair weighted images in the coronal plane and also we have sagittal oblique which is usually obtained in the T2 weighted image then what do we mean by coronal oblique and, and the sagittal oblique uh, first of all, we, we have the axial images and um, the axial image is usually similar to the ice cream cone. Uh, considering that the humeral head represents the ice cream ball and the glenoid part of the scapula is similar to the cone. Then uh, if you want to have coronal sections, you should cut from anterior to posterior or from posterior to anterior. But if you are cutting direct coronal, you will not see the anatomy or the pathology as I will mention. But you should have an oblique orientation of the coronal. And this oblique orientation is parallel to the, uh, to the central line of this ice cream cone. Then you, you got the axis of the ice cream cone and you cut parallel to the to this axis from anterior to posterior or from posterior to anterior then you got the coronal images in an oblique way which will show nicely the anatomy and the pathology the same applies for the sagittal images you know sagittal images are obtained from medial to lateral or from lateral to medial and uh, direct sagittal uh, sections will not also show the regular anatomy but you identify the axis of the ice cream cone and you have the sagittal images perpendicular to this axis from lateral to medial or from medial to lateral then uh, these are the coronal oblique and the sagittal oblique and direct axial images are usually obtained in the T1 and the gradient images. Then you know the T1 weighted images are known by the bright appearance of the fat and uh, if the fat is less bright this is T2 and uh, uh, relatively dark this is gradient or fat suppressed uh, uh, images or, or 
and I mean T2 star for example then you got the stair images where the bone marrow is very dark you remember that uh, the low signal anatomic structures uh, in both T1 and T2 include the cortical bone the ligaments and tendons and calcium and here in the shoulder we add the glenoid labrum uh, which is the, the uh, fibrocartilaginous rim uh, usually uh, deepens the uh, concavity of the glenoid uh, part of the scapula to accommodate uh, more uh, part of the humeral head and high signal lesion high signal in T1 and low signal in T2 this is fat and fat is present uh, subcutaneously and also in the bone marrow then uh, the opposite or the uh, fluids will show opposite appearance to the fat being of low signal in the T1 and high signal in the T2 fluids are represented by effusions, cysts, ganglion and also the articular cartilage which is uh, containing water then the approach for the shoulder joint is almost similar to that of the knee. You uh, first identify the anatomic structures you want to see and then you uh, uh, decide the, the plane of imaging which is uh, uh, adequate for evaluation of these structures uh, whether they are normal or pathologic. Then we have in the shoulder joint these anatomic structures, the tendons, the ligaments, bones, labrum, and bursa. Considering the tendons, we have four that are important. The supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis, and biceps tendon. Then we have uh, three ligaments, which are the superior, middle, and the inferior glenumeral ligaments. And we have, also there are some ligaments, but these three are uh, the most important and I will mention the remaining uh, 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 ligaments uh, uh, in their, uh, uh, whenever they are uh, important to be mentioned. Then uh, the, considering the bones, we would like to have an idea about the, this joint which is very important, the acromioclavicular joint. We also mentioned something about the acromion shapes and the labrum, you know, we have uh, four, Le uh, the glenoid labrum is divided into four parts, the superior and the inferior, the anterior and posterior labrum. And we have three bursa around the joint. One of the important bursa is, is the uh, subacromion subdeltoid bursa, also the subscapularis and the subcoracoid bursa I will mention. Uh, uh, in their uh, relevant sites. Then uh, looking at the frontal uh, view of the shoulder by conventional x-ray and you can see this is the glenoid part of the scapula and this is the head of the humerus and uh, in, in the uh, upper part of the humerus you can see the lesser tuberosity and the greater tuberosity and the groove between the two tuberosities which is uh, uh, the bicepital groove for the uh, tendon of the long head of the biceps. If you go to this uh, uh, picture and you see, this is the lesser tuberosity and this is the greater tuberosity, and here is the bicepital groove. And you know that the biceps uh, brachii has two uh, heads. The long head of the biceps, the tendon of the long head of the biceps will go through the bicepital groove and uh, uh, continue above the head of the humerus until it will insert near the base of the superior labrum. And this is the short head of the biceps which uh, inserts into the coracoid process as you can see here. Then this is the bicepital groove and this is the lesser tuberosity and this is the greater tuberosity. And here you can see the acromion and the, the acromion it will articulate with the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint. And uh, you remember that the clavicle is medial while the acromion is lateral. Then this is the coracoid process which is an anteriorly located structure and this is the spine of the scapula. 
If you look to the coronal image, then you see this is the glenoid part of the scapula, and this is the head of the humerus, and this is the uh, greater tuberosity. And here, this is the greater tuberosity. Then, this is the acromiclavicular joint. The clavicle is medial, and the acromion is uh, lateral. Okay, then if you uh, look carefully to the uh, uh, glenoid part of the scapula, you will see a low signal triangle here, which is the superior labrum, and a low signal triangle here, which is the inferior labrum. Then uh, the first issue in uh, interpreting the images of the shoulder is to identify the acromiclavicular joint. And this is the acromiclavicular joint. The clavicle is medial and the acromion is lateral. Whenever you see the acromiclavicular joint and the, the uh, muscle which is inferior to the joint is the supraspinatus muscle. And the supraspinatus tendon is this one which you will insert into the greater tuberosity. Then this is the acromiclavicular joint and this is the supraspinatus muscle and this is the supraspinatus tendon and the, the outside muscle is the deltoid of course you know then if you look here and you, you cannot see the acromic clavicular joint and instead you see the spine of the scapula identified by this inferior protrusion which is characteristic of the spine of the scapula whenever you see the spine of the scapula in the coronal view then you know that this tendon which is passing below the spine of the scapula and this is the infraspinatus then the supraspinatus tendon is identified by the acromioclavicular joint while the infraspinatus tendon is identified by the spine of the scapula and this particular protrusion and here both tendons this is the acromioclavicular joint and this is the supraspinatus muscle and this is the tendon inserting into the greater tuberosity this is the spine of the scapula with characteristic protrusion and this is the infraspinatus tendon also inserting into the greater tuberosity. Then if you uh, go anterior, then you will meet the subscapularis. And uh, this is the coracoid process, which is an anterior structure. And this is the subscapularis muscle, which is a very big muscle. And it has also a very thick tendon, which will insert into the lesser tuberosity. This is the subscapularis uh, tendon. It will insert into the lesser tuberosity, which is intimately related to the tendon of the long head of the biceps, so that many of the injuries affecting the subscapularis tendon will affect the tendon of the biceps, of the long head of the biceps muscle. Then uh, once more, this is the spine of the scapula characterized by the inferior protrusion and this is the infraspinatus uh, tendon but uh, here you can identify the supraspinate the acromic clavicular joint then this will be the supraspinatus muscle and this is the tendon both the supraspinatus and infraspinatus tendon tendons insert into the greater tuberosity and here is the coracoid process and this is the uh, subscapularis muscle this is the tendon of the subscapularis muscle inserting into the lesser tuberosity and this is the tendon of the long head of the biceps going through the bicepital groove if you want to see the full course of the long of the uh, long the tendon of the long head of the uh, of the biceps you may inject uh, contrast media inside the joint to have mr arthrogram and in this mr arthrogram you can see part of the uh, tendon of the long head of the biceps then uh, another part will be seen in this image and you can appreciate that the tendon is crossing over the head of the humerus to insert uh, in the glenoid part of the scapula at the base of the superior uh, labrum and you know that this tendon will cross inferior to the supraspinatus tendon which is this one inserting into the greater tuberosity then if you look carefully here then you see this triangle is the superior labrum and here you will see the inferior labrum but the inferior labrum in many 
cases is not triangle because this does not represent the inferior labrum alone it, it represents also the inferior glenumeral ligament this ligament is u shape it is attached to the glenoid part of the scapula as well as to the humeral uh, to the humerus the, the ligament is of low signal and the labrum is also of low signal then the combination of both represents this uh, configuration which is known as the inferior labrum inferior glenumeral ligament complex if you want to see the inferior labrum separate from the inferior glenumeral ligament you should inject contrast media inside the joint or the patient may have synovial effusion in these conditions the inferior glenumeral ligament will be distended and the, in this area is known as the axillary pouch and it will appear clearly separable from the inferior labrum which is a, a low signal triangle uh, along the inferior aspect of the glenoid part of this cavity then if you see that the inferior glenoid ligament is very thick and short then uh, this is known as adhesive capsulitis or the frozen shoulder the normal thickness of the inferior glenoid ligament is less than four millimeter if you look here this is the inferior glenoid ligament which is of normal thickness but if the inferior glenoid ligament is very thick as you can see here it's more than one centimeter and is also very tight there is no the distensible space here and this is known as adhesive capsulitis or the frozen shoulder the bursa which can be appreciated in the coronal images is the uh, subacromion bursa and this subacromion bursa is located below the acromic clavicular joint it will also extend below the deltoid muscle hence its name subacromion subdeltoid bursa uh, because this bursa is continuous below the acromion and also deep to the uh, uh, deltoid muscle then this is the uh, acromic clavicular joint then this muscle will be the supraspinatus muscle and this tendon is the supraspinatus tendon if you look uh, carefully here and you see some fluid below the, the acromic clavicular joint which is of low signal in the t1 and high signal in the t2 representing uh, fluid in the subacromian subdeltoid bursa and you remember that uh, bursa will not accumulate fluid unless it is inflamed or the fluid is coming from the joint whenever the bursa is continuous with the joint so we came to the our approach when we have tendons ligaments bones labrum and bursa what are the values of the coronal images considering the tendons we are able to assess the supraspinatus tendon if you identify the acromic clavicular joint and you look inferior to it then you can see the supraspinatus uh, tendon inserting into the greater tuberosity so what about the infraspinatus and the subscapularis they can be seen also in the coronal images but they are better evaluated in the axial images as i will mention then here you can evaluate the supraspinatus tendon what about the ligaments it is the inferior glenumeral ligament which will form the axillary pouch and you cannot evaluate this ligament unless there is effusion in the joint or uh, you have performed MR arthrogram considering the bones you can easily evaluate the acromic clavicular joint for only and this is the only lesion which is seen in the acromic clavicular joint osteoarthritis then in the labrum we have here the superior labrum and the, the inferior labrum which can be easily evaluated in the coronal planes considering the bursa you know the bursa which is evaluated in the coronal is the subacromian subdeltoid bursa and you remember that bursa will not contain fluid unless it is inflamed 
then this is the coronal image and this is the acromic clavicular joint and here you can see the supraspinatus muscle and the tendon inserting into the greater tuberosity and here this is the spine of the scapula with characteristic inferior protrusion and this is the infraspinatus muscle and the tendon is inserting also in the greater tuberosity then we came to the axial images and axial images as i have said they are similar to the ice cream cone this is the head of the humerus and this is the glenoid part of the scapula one of the essential to be evaluated in the axial images is the glenoid labrum the anterior one and the posterior one they are triangular in shape and they appear of low signal in all pulse sequences this is the anterior and this is the posterior labrum also you can evaluate the tendon of the subscapularis this is the scapula and this is the subscapularis the tendon of the subscapularis will insert here in the lesser tuberosity and the tendon of the infraspinatus this is the infraspinatus the tendon will uh, pass this way until it is inserted into the greater tuberosity. Between the greater tuberosity and the lesser tuberosity is the bicepital groove where you can identify the tendon of the long head of the biceps. Then uh, this is the subscapularis tendon and this is the infraspinatus tendon and here the bicepital groove, anterior labrum and posterior labrum. Then, once more, this is the uh, subscapularis tendon, and this is the biceps tendon, anterior labrum, posterior labrum, infraspinatus, and uh, the deltoid muscle, of course. Then, uh, if you look to this image, which is a sagittal view, and you see uh, this is the glenoid labrum, and uh, this is the inferior glenumeral ligament forming the axillary pouch. This is the middle glenumeral ligament, and this is the superior glenumeral ligament as well as the biceps tendon. Then uh, you, you see this is the supraspinatus and this is the infraspinatus and this is the teres minor as I, I will mention in the sagittal images. But uh, what I mean to say here is this is the anterior labrum and this is the subscapularis muscle related to the coracoid process. And the middle glenumeral ligament is present in between the labrum and the, the subscapularis. So it is best seen in the axial images. If you identify the subscapularis tendon, and this is the subscapularis, and the anterior labrum, and this is the anterior labrum, then you will see a very small structure here, which is the middle glenumeral ligament. And the, this is uh, another view. Then you see this is the, acromi the subscapularis tendon, and here is lesser tuberosity, greater tuberosity, the tendon of the biceps. This is the anterior labrum and this is the posterior labrum. And here the middle glenumeral ligament, which is located between the subscapularis and the anterior glenoid labrum. If you go back to this image, and uh, here is you can see nicely the, the middle glenumeral ligament. This is the subscapularis uh, tendon. And this is the anterior labrum, and the ligament is present in between, as you can see. Then, if you uh, want to see the full course of the middle glenoid ligament, you should inject contrast and have sagittal images. And this is the sagittal MR arthrography of the of the shoulder, showing the three ligaments. This is the inferior glenoid ligament. And this is the middle glenumeral ligament, which is present between the subscapularis and the anterior labrum. And here you can see this fine structure, which is the superior glenumeral ligament. Then if you want to see the glenumeral ligaments, you should inject the contrast inside the joint and you have uh, uh, sagittal images. This is the uh, inferior glenumeral ligament and uh, this is the middle one and this is the superior uh, glenumeral ligament then what are the values of the axial images we go back to the approach tendons ligaments bones labrum and bones considering the tendons we are able to see the subscapularis and the infraspinatus tendon also we can see the biceps tendon in the group 
Then uh, what about the glenohumeral ligaments? The middle one can be seen between the subscapularis tendon and the anterior labrum. Then uh, uh, considering the bones, here we can evaluate the, the head of the humerus for a very important lesion which is known as the heel sex injury. Uh, this lesion is commonly seen in cases of anterior dislocation of the shoulder and uh, in association with bankrupt lesions as I will mention in the sector of instability. Then evaluation of the labrum, the anterior and the posterior one, the anterior labrum and the posterior labrum are clearly evaluated in this axial images and also the subscapularis bursa which is located below the subscapularis muscle. Then in, uh, 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 this is, these are coronal images and here you can see the region of the acromic clavicular joint. Then you uh, know that this is the supraspinatus muscle and this is the tendon which is inserting into the greater tuberosity. If you look here in, the, in this image, and you cannot see the spine of the scapula. So don't consider this as the infraspinatus. The infraspinatus is seen at the level of the spine of the scapula, but this is the supraspinatus muscle and this is the tendon inserting into the greater tuberosity. And here is the axillary pouch and this is the middle, the, sorry, the inferior glenohumeral ligament, inferior labrum, the superior labrum. This is the axial image showing the subscapularis tendon, anterior labrum, posterior labrum, and this is the infraspinatus, the biceps tendon in the, in the group. And this is the supraspinatus, and this is the acromiclavicular, superior labrum, inferior labrum glenohumeral ligament, and this is the tendon of the long head of the biceps. Then we came to the sagittal images. In the sagittal images, you can see this is the coracoid process and this is the glenoid part of the scapula. And here you can see the acromion clavicular joint. You know that the acromion is pointing anteriorly. And uh, if you consider the acromion clavicular joint, you know that the clavicle is anterior and the acromion is posterior. The acromic clavicular joint is an, uh, a landmark for the supraspinatus muscle, and this is the muscle which is immediately inferior to the acromic clavicular joint is the supraspinatus muscle. Then the, the next to it, the infraspinatus, and the third one is the teres minor. Then supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and this is the deltoid, of course, and here you can see the subscapularis which is located anteriorly. Then look carefully for this drawing. And here you can see the glenoid part of the scapula, and this is the coracoid process. Then you see here a recess which is known as the superior subscapularis recess. This recess is continuous with the shoulder joint, meaning that if the joint is containing fluid, this recess will accumulate also fluid. But the subscapularis bursa is located outside the subscapularis muscle here. And uh, sorry, the subcoracoid bursa is located outside the subscapularis uh, uh, muscle, as you can see here. And you assume that the subcoracoid bursa will be located in this, uh, in this anatomic site. Then this is sagittal images, and this is the coracoid process, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and the subscapularis is located anteriorly. Once more, this is the acromiclavicular joint, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and the subscapularis, and here is the coracoid process, then this will be the clavicle, and this will be the coracoid, the, the acromion, the clavicle and the acromion. One of the important values of the sagittal images is to evaluate the shape of the acromion. And we have four shapes for the acromion. The type 1 with flat undersurface, like this one, and type 2 with curved or concave undersurface. These uh, two types are considered normal acromion shapes and they represent the majority of the cases. Type 3 is an acromion with inferior hook, and this is a very dangerous uh, acromion 
considering injuries of the uh, uh, supraspinatus tendon uh, starting by degeneration ending by tear. And uh, the last one, which is the rarest, is the, the acromion with convex undersurface. These are the four types which are evaluated in the sagittal image. And you should remember that the acromion with anterior or inferior hook is one of the lesions which contribute much to degeneration and tears of the supraspinatus tendon. Then in the sagittal images, you are able to assess the acromion shape and also to assess for acromic clavicular osteoarthritis. And you can see the subcoracoid bursa outside or anterior to the subscapularis uh, muscle. And you remember that this recess is known as the superior subscapularis recess, which is continuous with the joint. Then there are some ligaments and structures which can be easily evaluated in the sagittal images, including number one, the coracohumeral ligament, and here is the coracohumeral ligament. You know that this is the coracoid process, and here is the head of the humerus, and this ligament is known as the coracohumeral ligament. The coracoclavicular ligament is passing from the coracoid to the undersurface of the clavicle. And you know that uh, this is the clavicle and this is the acromion, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and this is the subscapularis. And here you see the superior subscapularis recess, which is containing fluid, and this means that the joint is also containing fluid. Then the superior glenumeral ligament is evaluated in the sagittal image, provi images provided you have an MR arthrogram, as I have mentioned. Then you can also evaluate the rotator interval lesions in this sagittal image. What is the rotator interval? It is the space between the supraspinatus and the subscapularis. This area between the supraspinatus and the subscapularis is known as the rotator interval. And one of the important structures in this rotator interval is the coracohumeral ligament. So in order to diagnose rotator interval tears, then you should see some fluid here and absence of the coracohumeral ligament. These are the two signs for rotator interval tears. Uh, finally, MR arthrography is one of the essential techniques for evaluation of the shoulder in most of the conditions and is very helpful in evaluation of supraspinatus tendon tears and also in in almost all lesions affecting the glenoid librium and most of the slab lesions as well. Uh, MR arthrogram is performed by uh, uh, introducing a needle under fluoroscopic control aiming at the joint line between the glenoid and the head of the humerus. And the needle is advanced until it hits the bone, then you withdraw the needle for only one millimeter. Then you are in the in the joint uh, space and you start injecting the contrast media. The contrast media injected are uh, uh, less than one millimeter of gadolinium diluted with uh, 20 milliliter saline and you add some of the contrast media uh, urographene or telebrex used in conventional urography so that you are able to see the contrast media under screen control. Then this is the MR, conventional MRI and MR arthrogram of the same case. And here you, you can see the subscapularis tendon, the anterior labrum, posterior labrum, infraspinatus, and so. But uh, if you inject contrast, and you can see how clear the image is. This, uh, this is, is the subscapularis tendon, and here you see the uh, biceps tendon in the groove, and also you can see the anterior and posterior labra quite clear. And this is an MR arthrogram showing an injury of the superior labrum, which uh, indicates the slab injury I will discuss. And this is an example of uh, MR, MR, conventional MRI and MR arthrogram of the same case. Here you can, you can suspect the injuries of the supraspinatus tendon 
but you are not able to evaluate the superior labrum, for example. But here you can see full sickness tear of the supraspinatus tendon with, with retraction and a gap between the cut edge of the tendon and its insertion site. And also you can see th this uh, superior labrum with an internal bright signal denoting a slab injury as I will explain later on. Uh, uh, this was the end of the first part of the uh, imaging of the shoulder. I thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi.